Hey everybody and welcome back to the Kenneth Wells engine build. So I think in the last uh, episode I had started on this uh, engine frame and I got the and uh, you know I have this drilled out uh, to accept the bush it needs to be tapped. I didn't have a tap at the time. I do now I'm going to tap that uh, quarter 28 right which is a uh, uh, US uh, fine or UN fine UNF uh, and I need to countersink these and I made a tool to countersink those. This tool is uh, made based on um, one explained in uh, LBSC's uh, Titch book, um, Locomotive Building Simple Lo Locomotive book. And uh, if you're interested on in seeing how this was made, uh, check out my uh, upcoming um, YouTube shop student video. So. So that's a couple little things that I want to get done with that. So we'll go ahead and start with that. And then uh, after that, the next uh, bit to make, hopefully it's all in frame here, I need to make the bearing, um, which will mount into the engine frame, okay, that the crankshaft will ride into. I need to make the crank pin and the flywheel. So. We'll see how much we get done tonight, and uh, so let's let's get on it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap this. Now, this was drilled uh, number three, um, which is the tap size for quarter 28, and it was counter sunk or counter bored with quarter inch uh, down about an inch. So it leaves about a quarter inch or so of thread that the uh, bearing will um, thread into. Now, uh, because it was drilled quarter inch and this tap is quarter inch it's it's not a sliding fit so I'm gonna have to uh, thread this down okay I'm, I'm starting to feel it cut now I think Let's see it down there And being aluminum, I'm just cutting it dry. This is a new tap. It's pretty sharp. So I'm starting to come out there. All right. That was pretty simple. All right, I'm going to run the tap back out of there and uh, and then go over the drill press and we'll do our countersinks or our, uh, spot faces. So I'll see you right over there. Okay, so the next job to do is I need a, a flat spot here that's parallel with the base here that the nut that will hold this engine frame down to the base plate can sit flat. Now I don't know how well this will show up. I'll try here. So here I have a little brass nut, and these are nuts are made out of a uh, quarter inch across flats brass. Okay, and uh, so this countersink is made so that uh, its width is wider than the nut is across from corner to opposite, you know, diagonal. Well, or across corners, I guess you could say. And um, and again, if you're interested uh, or curious to how I made this. Um, it's called a pen drill, and it's basically just a two-fluted flat drill uh, with a pen at the end. Um, I made this based on um, the Titch book, the Titch locomotive book uh, from uh, Cur that Curly. They call him Curly. I think his name's Lawrence something. I'll try to remember to put it in the video or at least in the description. Um, but anyway, it has a pilot that is the same uh, uh, that I've turned the same size as. The clearance hole, which is 9 64 for 540. 540 is basically an eighth inch. So let's turn that size and then the, my two cutting edges. I don't know if you can see them or not. Uh, the two cutting edges are uh, a little bit wider. It's 5 16 actually. All right, so um, all I need to do, uh, if you look at this uh, casting, you can see that it's, it's tapered, right? It has to have draft in order to pull out of uh, the sand casting. 
So all I want to do is I want to take that down to just where it cleans up and I have a flat spot. So, and I'm sorry my drill is really loud, my drill press is really loud, so bear with me. So the pilot goes right in the hole. Can you, uh, can you see that? How I've made a nice flat spot and that will be parallel with this. So let's go over here and get the other side. Again, the pilot will pop right in the hole that keeps everything centered. I'm going just deep enough so that I have a clean face all the way around. So I have a spot face all the way around so that's ready to go and we can test it put our nut in there and you see the nut sits in there nice and flat all right so now the frame is not completely done there'll be some holes up here uh, for the air or for the steam inlet uh, the pivot pin and exhaust and of course an oil hole up here but we'll wait until we're further along before we add those all right so let's go over the bench and see what the next uh, next bit that we have to do is Okay, just for another look, you can see how it made a flat face there and that the nut sits on there and that the nut, say, would be parallel with the bottom. That was the whole intention or the whole necessity for the spot face. And again, this is the tool that I made. You can see it has two cutting lips, right, and a pen. Very simple to make, just made out of a drill rod or silver steel, whatever you want to call it. Again, if you're interested in see how this little tool was made, very simple. Uh, check out my YouTube shop student video on uh, making a pen drill, and uh, I think you'll like it. All right, so let's uh, move on. So the next uh, set of drawings are the engine component uh, components uh, sheet one, and on here we have the bearing. The bearing will be made out of. Uh, six six diameter, or in this case, I'm, I'm going to use quarter, I got quarter inch um, leaded brass rod. Uh, it's going to get a quarter 28 thread on the end, um, and it's going to be 30 mil long. And I will drill it and ream it um, 5 30 seconds. Okay, so normally it calls for 4 millimeter, that's very, very close to 5 30 seconds. 3 millimeter is pretty close to 1 8 so that's the sizes I want to use so I have some 1 8 drill rod cut to length for the crank pen and I have some 5 30 second drill rod uh, cut for the uh, crank shaft okay and of course I have some inch and a half material here for the flywheel all right so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, with this bearing here so uh, let me get it over in the lay then get the camera set up over there and Let's, uh, let's get making this. Okay guys, we're gonna start with the bearing first. And so I can get it in frame. Okay, so I'm gonna face off the end. And um, then I'm gonna probably, let's see. I'm gonna face off the end. I'm going to um, drill it with a 964 inch uh, bit. And then I'm gonna ream it 530 seconds. And I'm gonna do that for a little over 30 30 mil deep, right? And um, so when I part it off, it'd be 30 mil long. And then I'm going to put a quarter 28 thread on the on the end here. So I'm going to start off by facing it off, and we're going to drill and ream it. So let's get started. My tool is just a hair low. <clears throat> All right, that's faced off.
Okay, I'm just going to kiss this. The center drill is actually a little big. I need a number two, but my two number two is broke, and I need to buy some center drills. So I'm just going to gently start that. That'd be good enough. And I know 30 mil is just short of the length of the flutes on this thing. Matter of fact. Now for any hope of accuracy, I'm just gonna slowly peck drill this. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that I got at least 30, 30 millimeters there. Gives me room to part it off. All right. So that is 1 64th under 5 30 seconds. So now I want to put in the reamer. And I'm going to slow the lathe down. A couple notches. All right. All right, and I'm all the way at the bottom. All right, so that hole has been drilled and reamed. And what we'll do is grab our piece of 5/32ths drill rod that's going to be our crankshaft and see how that fits in there. Okay, I think that's going to be a good run and fit. Okay. So let me uh get set up here with the uh, tap and let's uh, cut some threads on here and then we'll part it off. So I'll bring you back here in just a minute. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is cut some quarter 28 threads here. So I've got this set up. Lock my tool post down. Okay, so the drawing doesn't say how deep to cut these threads or how long to cut them. So I'm going to guess that I really only need to go just to about to the edge of the engine. So I'm going to start here about the width of the die and see where we are. And it looks like I may have cut them a little too deep. Let's see. Oh yeah, I like that. And let's see, where's 30 takes us? That's the wrong 30, isn't it? Hmm, you know, I wanna, I think I wanna part that off just a little bit long. I can always come back and dress it down. Let me pull just a little bit on this, on the chuck. Okay, all right, so I've already got the uh, tool set square, and I want to come off, I think I want to take it, I'll take it about 30, you know, I want to take it 35 millimeters instead of 30, because I can always trim it back. All right, so let's part this off. Okay, so a little bit of cleanup to do. There we have it. There's the, the bush. We'll set that off to the side. Okay, the next thing on the plans, after doing the bush, now I'll have a little cleanup work to do, but I'm not going to bother you with that, is I um, need to turn a little taper on that. I'm not going to bother you with that. We're going to mash that down a little bit. Okay, so really the next sort of more interesting bit is the flywheel. And the flywheel is uh, inch and a half material. It's uh, cut uh, 
uh, nine mil thick. Uh, so let me, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the electric, uh, <laughs> the electric uh, parting tool, my bandsaw, and I'll cut off a wafer of that bar that I showed you and then chuck that bit up here uh, in the three jaw chuck and we'll face it down to size and we'll drill and go from there. So I'll bring you back then. Okay guys, before I talk about what's here in the chuck, this, uh, this brass bushing that I made, right, I drilled it and reamed it, but that was really tight. So I've had to, uh, uh, I've got a nice slide and fit in there now, uh, but I had to polish my drill rod just a little bit. It was just a little too tight. Now maybe that would have broke in. Uh, still, you know, maybe a couple tight spots, you know, but it's, it slides in there and, oops, I'm, it slides in there and it spins real good. So I think it's going to work. Although I do need to trim this down and, and put a, 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 a slot across the middle to be able to get onto a screwdriver. So, But we'll do more on this one here later. Right now I'm going to concentrate on the flywheel. Now the flywheel calls uh, to be 9 millimeters thick, which is you know about 3 eighths, and that's what I'm going to go for, 3 eighths. So what I've done was, uh, I said I was going to part this off in the, in the saw, but I didn't. I actually parted it off on the lathe. So I got it in the truck, chuck and I'm trying to keep the faces parallel, okay? So what I've done is I've taken some 7 8 inch um, parallels and placed them up against the face of the jaw, put the, the, uh, the, what's the flywheel blank in there and tapped it in. So now I'm just going to pull the, uh, maybe. I'm just going to pull these out. Okay, there went one. Okay, so I got my parallels out of there. And I'll give this another little nip. Alright, so now I'm just going to face this to thickness, uh, which I'm going to go for 3 eighths. I have the uh, lathe and back gears, or still in back gears. Let me. Put it back. There we go. All right. I'll need a tool, facing tool. All right. Let's get going here. Okay, let's get a thickness on here and like I said this doesn't have to be too exact so I'm just going to use the calipers. I'm shooting for 375. Looks like I'm at 425. So I've got about another 50 to take. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this. Taking this down. And uh, I'll bring you back in here when I'm uh, got, got maybe a pass left to do, and we'll go to the next step. So I'll bring you back in here in just a second. Okay, well I forgot to hit record, but we're face down to three eighths of an inch thick, roughly nine millimeters. All right, so uh, the next thing I need to do, according to the drawing, is let's see if I can get this in here. Uh, okay is I want to drill all the way through and I'm going to uh, I'm going to center drill it and I'll drill it with a number 25 all the way through and then I'm going to drill with the 532nd mm, just yeah I'm going to just going to leave you know maybe an eighth inch or just a little bit less on the back and the reason why is that uh, the crankshaft has a uh, has a little taper on it and then it gets pressed into the uh, into the uh, flywheel and if that doesn't work, then uh, you know I'll just stick it. I'll put it in with some Loctite if that doesn't you know hold it. And then the uh, after that we'll uh, we'll cut the groove, um, drill the hole for the um, crank pin, and and get that stuff ready. So for now, let's uh, let's just get uh, let's get the hole punched through here. And I'm just going to peck drill my way through. All right, there that went.
Okay, well, I got to get the, uh, I think I neglected to get the 532nd inch uh, drill out, drill bit. So let me get that and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so I have my 532nd inch drill bit and really all I've done is I've held it up here. Make sure to leave a couple millimeters, uh, maybe just shy of an eighth inch uh, from it breaking through. So I marked it there. I don't know if you can see it. And uh, that's what I'll use as my guide to uh, as, as far as to how far I'm going to poke this bit in there. And that should do it right there. All right, so the next thing to do is, I better look at my plans, huh? So let me uh, let me figure out the next step here and and then we'll do it. Well, actually, I think what I wanna do is um, see if I can find a tool that I can use to go ahead and cut the uh, relief uh, around the, uh, oh, you know what, I have to turn this around. See, I almost messed up. See, <laughs> this would have been a nice new newbie mistake here. So, as we're looking at this, I drilled it all the way through with the uh, with the number 25, and then I counterbored it with the 5:30 seconds, almost all the way through, leaving a little bit left. So you see here, but now you see my rim is over on this side, okay? And uh, now my three millimeter hole is drilled all the way through. So I think what I'm going to do is. Um, um, pull this out and um, we'll have to turn it around and I'll bring you back. Okay, I've decided that before I pull this out, I want to put a, a mark across the center of the disc here so that I can mark where my crank pin is going to go. And remember, this is the back of the flywheel, so this won't actually be seen. So all I'm going to do is uh, you know, bring my tool up here, touch the work, and just bring my tool back until it cuts a little line. So I don't know if you can see that, but we'll take it out of the uh, chuck here. And let's see, can you see there where it, let's see. Can you see where it scored a line? All right, so that way I can mark my pen. So I'm gonna take this over to the bench and uh, mark, it, mark the uh, spot where the, uh, uh, where the crank pin's gonna go and I'll bring you right in over there. Okay, so the crank pin is supposed to be eight millimeters off center uh, from, the, from the crank shaft. So now I'm working in Imperial. Remember, everything's kind of wiggy for me. So uh, I've measured the nominal diameter of my, of my uh, flywheel. It's an inch and a half, right? So half of that is 750 thou. Uh, and then add to that uh, eight millimeters. Uh, it ends up being one inch and 65 thou. So now remember I put that little line across the center. I've got that standing vertical, pretty close to it. I don't think it has to be super precise. Now I'm just gonna bring my scriber, which has been preset and mark that. So now I have a, a crosshair. Uh, let's see if it'll show. I don't know if it'll show. Yeah, maybe. I have a crosshair there of uh, where the um, crank pin is going to go. Now uh, that is going to get punched and drilled three millimeters. Uh, or in my case, it's going to be eighth inch. Let's see if I got you in frame here. In my case, it's um, see, it's eight minutes, uh, eight millimeters above center where the crank pin will go, and I'm going to drill that through eighth inch for my eighth inch drill rod. So I'll do that, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I have the eighth inch hole drilled into it. Now this will be for the crank pin. Crank pin is a piece of eighth inch drill rod. Um, if we look at the drawing, we see that the drill rod will get peened here in the back and then drive fit until it's flush into the flywheel uh, from the back and then it will um, probably get trimmed to length later. 
So essentially, you know, we will come from the, the back. We know this is back because it's the side that I marked, right? And uh, that will push all the way in. Of course, it will lock itself in. Nice thing about that is that you could then change the uh, pin if you needed to by just by driving it out, okay? And then, of course, you know, you have the, the bearing and the crank. And, um, of course, i got to put a taper on here yet. And it will get pushed back in, into the crankshaft like so. So we're coming along. And then I drew this line over here on this side here to know that I need to cut a groove in the face of that. Okay, but uh, it's coming along. We're, I'm getting closer here. And uh, so I think the next thing I will do is put this back in the chuck and find a tool that would make a nice, uh, that will put a nice little groove in there. So I might have to grind one up, so I'll bring you back. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna cut this little recess or groove. It's just a decorative groove in the flywheel. And um, so I have remounted the um, flywheel back in the truck, chuck. I used spacers just like I did last time, like I showed you, so it's not to waste your time. Okay, so the tool that I have in the tool post is just a round nose cutter. Um, has a radius on the end, kind of a steep V. I, you know, I don't really want a square bottom. This is, you know, you can use any kind of form tool you want to form the groove. And then what I've done was I've sort of eyeballed the tool about halfway between the rim, the outside edge, and, and the crank pin hole. So I don't know if that really shows up or not, but you'll see and I'm trying a different camera angle so you guys have to let me know how well or how bad this works all right so I've got the um, lay set to uh, about 418 rpm and uh, we're gonna kind of plunge this in here and hopefully I could do this without uh, too much trouble good sharp high-speed steel tool oh yeah All right, I'm starting to get a little chatter. So I'll tell you what, let's see where we're at with it. Uh, you know, that's not bad. But I think I want to bring it a little closer out to the edge. I want to, I want to bring the tool out. Like I said, this is just a, a, what, a what you want kind of thing. So I'm just going to bring that out a little bit. And I want to drop the lay speed down to... Uh, Let's see, I guess this is 266 RPM. So, let's see what that does. Until I see that just blend in. Okay, I think that's what I want. Let's shut it off here and take a look. Oh yeah, so it's got a nice radius rim. Just a little bit of chatter, but you know what I can live with? It's going to get some paint. All right, so that's that part. Okay, let me uh, get the plans here, or the drawings. Okay, and hopefully I can get this in frame. Okay, let me back out here a little bit. Okay, so we just cut this groove. Um, all right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to turn a little bit of a taper on the crankshaft because it gets pressed in, and it looks like I need to flatten the crank pin a little bit because it comes in from behind. So that's, uh, let me get set up for the, let me get the crankshaft set up in here, see if it'll fit in there. And I think I'm just going to file the little taper on there. So I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I have the uh, 532nd silver steel crankshaft in here, or uh, drill rod, however you want to call it. And so really, uh, the plans call for like a two degree taper, maybe for about a quarter inch long. And really all that is, is to get the, um, the uh, crankshaft started into the um, flywheel. So I'm just going to file that on. I'm not going to get all pandemic and set a set a uh, compound or anything. I'm just going to file it in there. Maybe just a hair more. Okay, I believe that'll do it. All right, so that bit is done. We'll uh, grab the flywheel and just double check here. 
that's a good start and it is goes starts right in there I think that can be pressed on okay As a matter of fact it kind of sort of wants to stick anyway all right so let's come over to the bench and um, and check out the crank pen and see what we need to do with that okay so the next thing we want to do is here on the crank pen there's a little the end is flattened down it's just been peened down so that when you slide it through the hole in the flywheel that it catches and then you can drive it in that way you know the pen could be reversible in case you made it too short cut it off too short bend it or whatever or just for whatever reason so what I have here is my handy dandy anvil that uh, Chirpy from Chirpy's Tinkerings made for me and uh, boy I tell you what it has been useful so I'm just going to take the end of this pen and hit it a couple times with my hammer my ball peen all right I see where that's flattening it out so I'm sure that's swedging it out swage swedge what's the word all right so let's see if that picks that up all right so see how that's flattened okay so now inserting the pen from the back see it goes so far now it can be driven in there so all right all right so really the only thing left now for me to do other than assemble the uh, crankshaft is uh, to file a slot a screwdriver slot in this and I'll do that off camera and trim it to length so I'll, I'll bring you back in when I have that done okay so I have the bushing slitted and boy that's a hack job I might remake this piece but truth be known is you'll never see it so here I have the here I have the uh, engine frame and the bushing slides in there and I'm going to thread it in until mm, well I've got it threaded in so there's just a little bit of the bushing sticks proud about a millimeter that way to give something for the back of the flywheel to run against and I got about enough of the uh, bushing sticking out that I can get my screwdriver in so you see that you could tell that you can't see really see my mistake now I done a hacksaw to initially split it and then I got these little Harbor Freight diamond files and um, I'm almost in mind that these things are just near junk. I need to get some real needle files. So if you guys uh, recommend any, let me know. All right, so the uh, crankshaft slides in the bearing, and it spins freely. So really all I have to do is uh, put together the, the uh, well, the crankshaft and the crank pin to the flywheel. So let me uh, see if I can get the camera set up over by the press and we'll get her done okay I'm over here at my 20 ton central machinery harbor freight press and I hope I really hope it's enough press to push this rod in here we'll see all right so I've uh, got the um, flywheel right groove side down obviously want that and then remember the taper it's just going to sit in here and we'll get it started and hopefully we get that nice and straight and I think okay I just I just felt it hit this plate so what I want to do is I want to back this off just a little bit, or maybe a whole lot. Let's see here. All right. All right. So that's almost flush with that. I'm actually going to come over here and let's see. Okay. I just want to make sure I can feel it under there. Okay. 
And I want to see if I can just push this a little more so that it's just protruding through the flywheel. Okay, I can just feel it. All right. You know, I, I know a lot of people give Harbor Freight a bunch of crap about their tools, but you know, I have bought some Harbor Freight stuff that has really kind of worked out well for me, okay? All right, so the crankshaft is pressed into the um, flywheel, and that probably will never back out. But if it does, I'll come back and I'll put it in with some Loctite. Uh, now, I'm just slightly proud here. And uh, the next obvious thing to do would be to put in the crank pin, okay? Uh, and then stake it in from the back. But I'm going to hold off on that. Let me get the crank pin. It's just simply going to come in from the back like this, right? And protrude on this side, okay? But I'm going to hold off on doing the crank pin because I want to paint this and the way I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to uh, paint it yellow like the uh, gas tank is and then um, I'll chuck it back up over in the lathe and take just the lightest skim pass across it to clean the paint off and then bring the, uh, uh, the crankshaft flush with the uh, face of the flywheel and it'll be done. So let me bring the uh, camera back over to the over to the bench and let's let's kind of take a look at our progress okay so it's time to wrap this up so I have the bushing uh, in the frame and have the crankshaft pressed into the flywheel the flywheel is all done there has a, a crank pen you know we'll, we'll press in would we'll actually press in from the back okay and that fits and and it's smooth okay now there's a couple things that I do want to say about it um, so you know I have a cheap set of um, high-speed steel reamers right um, I don't even remember where but I think they come from Shars I think they came from Shars okay they ream right on side I guess on size I guess because the 532nd reamer when I reamed the bushing out the um, 532nd drill rod was a very snug fit it was not really a press fit but maybe a very very light press fit so I ended up having to polish the the uh, 532nd drill rod just a little bit so that it would slide in there and and uh, and move freely so now the only other thing I'm gonna do and I'll probably do off camera is that uh, like I said I'm gonna paint this degrease this paint this yellow run a very light skim cut across the face to remove this just very slight protrusion from the crankshaft to the flywheel and a very light facing cut to remove any uh, the paint and then that way I got a nice bright yellow stripe right around in there and then I'll come back obviously and and uh, press this pin in from the back so so there you have it I'm gonna I'm gonna call this one here uh, it does spin quite well um, and it's uh, been a fun fun engine build so where, where to from here well um, I need to drill an oil hole here and put a slight countersink uh, that's a quick job and do a little painting and I still want to do a little fettling or on these castings you know but that stuff I'll do off but as far as the next build it looks like the next sheet is the cylinder uh, cylinder, the cylinder plate, and the cylinder end. And it looks like it's fairly straightforward and probably a solder job, so that'd be interesting. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, yeah, it's soldered. So um, that will uh, be the next one. So thank you for uh, watching and, and, and sharing uh, your time with me on these uh, Kenneth Wells uh, engine videos if you like these sort of things. Um, um, Please tell your friends. Oh, and just one last thing. This is the tool 
that I used to cut the um, groove into the flywheel. All right, so if these uh, things are interesting, um, please uh, tell your friends. Consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. If you do subscribe, hit the little bell uh, so you're notified when I post another video. Hey, other than that, have a blessed day.